It's Christmas time and Dollywood. Come along with us today as we explore everything Smoky Mountain Christmas has to offer. It's also a great time to pick up some holiday gear. They've got a variety of different Christmas clothing items and decorative items around the park. Park and rebuilding will have a light on it in some fashion. So as it starts to fall nighttime here in Dollywood, you will notice the place just glows. It's magical. It's wonderful. If you love the way Christmas kind of makes you feel, then you've definitely got to come to this park. It's just about unlike anything other in this in this world as far as theme park goes. All right, for lunch today, we're gonna jump into Red Drive-In and have a burger. We have Picky Eater burgers are on her list of approved items, so here we go. Ran into some friends on the way in. I think they're looking for a morsel. I know this is the feeding ground, isn't it? Yeah. Excuse me, friends. Excuse me. Hi. Red's Drive-In is your typical 50s, 60s kind of uh, diner atmosphere. Burgers, fries, sandwiches. I'm a coming. A number two for me.
We're outside eating at Red's. I've already taken a bite of my burger, but it's not too bad. You get um, a burger and some fries. This was about 15 bucks for these two items. And then you do have to purchase this separate. Um, so yes, it's typical theme park burger. It's pretty good. It's got some bacon on it. We had to sit outside because the ducks are out here. And uh, yeah, they're surrounding. Go ahead. Ready? Oh goodness. Yeah, they're all swarming. So yeah, we're feeding the ducks. Feed the birds. Toppins are back. Toppins. Feed, feed the chuck. Feed the chuck too. It's time to feed the chuck. <laughs> All right, so we're going to eat this food and then get on our merry little way. Just a little bit of information about Dollywood and the Smoky Mountain Christmas Festival. All rides here will be operational, minus anything water related, like your River Rampage, your Daredevil Falls. Those all will be closed. Also closed for the remainder of the operating season is Lightning Rod. Lightning Rod, since op opening day, has been plagued with issues with its lift heel. Um, so during the off season, they are going to refit it with a variable um, frequency chain lift. So this should help cut down on the interruptions in service for this ride. Looking forward to that for the 2024 operating season. This is the Rock and Roadway attraction. There is no official height requirement to this attraction. You do load on either side of these staircases. Um, and if you are under 42 inches, you do have to be accompanied by someone. But there is no restrictions as to who can drive, so to speak. So as long as you have someone in your party that's over 42 inches, anyone can ride this ride. You will note that coming in on the main queue, you will have to go up some stairs and down some stairs. If stairs are a problem for you, then you can request a ride accessibility pass um, to be able to board this ride uh, differently than the other guests. Here comes Mommy's ride, is the black one. Elena's gonna get to ride in the pink one. Pink! My favorite color! Ah! Here we go! <laughs> Welcome to the Rock and Roadway. All right. Please remain seated and keep your hands and arms inside the car at all times. If you stop moving while you're still grooving, oh, goodness. and hope will be on the way. Riding the rock and roadway by myself. Of the year. I don't know if there'll be snow, but have a cup of cheer. Jolly Christmas and walk down the street. Say hello to friends you know, everyone you meet. Oh, hold the mistletoe on where you can see. Hey, Elena, we just got off Rock and Roadway. How was it? It was good. It's like a very simple ride, but it's like, it's very good. And it's like kind of like a kitty ride, kind of, and it's just super fun to do. And I and I just like to wreck everything. <laughs> you like to wreck everything? Yeah, like yeah, like say on the left turn, I will turn right when it's about to come to the turn. <laughs> and then and then does that make you crash? Uh, not really. It just uh, it, it just makes it jiggle a little bit. Makes it jiggle a little bit. Yeah, I think it's impossible to wreck on this because they do let two-year-olds drive these cars. Yeah. So. so. Would you recommend? Yeah. 
<laughs> Unless you don't want to wreck. Unless you don't want to wreck. All right, friends. Dollywood still operates a steam train here for guests. This takes you on about a 25 minute loop around Dollywood property. You get to see most of the park. It's a very relaxing ride. And these engines are from the 1920s, I believe. Um, not 100% sure to quote me on that. I'll try to get some info for you. But Dollywood has two. They have Klondike Katie and this is Cinderella. So we're gonna go jump on real quick. Those two whistles you just heard were Tell us that our engineer has received our all clear and we will be pulling out of the depot at any moment. As we get ready to depart, let me remind you of a couple of the safety rules you will need to know for our trip today. Please remember to remain seated at all times. This does include small children, as they are not permitted to stand on your lap, on the seat, or on the floor. If you have small children in your group, please have them sit in the center portion of your seat with an adult on the outside edges. Also, remember to keep all body parts inside the car at all times, and the use of tobacco products is not permitted during our trip. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, if y'all are ready for a train ride, say woohoo! Woo yeah, I'm ready for a ride. Well, I just heard that engineer blow the whistle. Looks and like I we're on our way. The that means All we are aboard ready to the Dollywood Express out. Cinderella. Are we Hey, I never did say this was a bullet train. <laughs> we'll get there. Don't worry. Here we go. Folks, on the last few cars, look over there in the middle of the depot on your left. Wave goodbye to Depot Master Alistair. He's waving us off there. Let's tell Alistair we'll see him in a day or two, a week at the most, but we have never been gone more than a week. Bye, Alistair. See you later. Hold the fort down for us while we're gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Now we here at Dollywood, we do consider ourselves to be the friendliest place in the whole Great Smoky Mountains. And you folks can help us keep it that way by giving everybody a great big howdy on the count of three. Let's do it. One, two, three. Howdy! All right. Good job, everybody. See you later, folks. Have a wonderful day here with us at Dollywood. We'll be back in a little while. Don't you worry. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, y'all. Woohoo! Here we go. Hold on. Bye. Hey, if you look up ahead, y'all.
all on the right hand side you'll see Dollywood's Old Fashioned Grist Mill. That is home of our fresh baked cinnamon bread. Make sure you go in there and grab yourself a couple of blows of that hot cinnamon bread. It is yummy for your tummy. Bye bye everybody, Craftsman's Valley. Have a great day with us. We'll see you later. And we're rolling on through the Owens Farm Crossing. We've got our very own conductor, Caleb, here at the Owens Farm Gates, keeping everybody safe and sound. Keep those chickens fed for us, Caleb. Y'all have a fun day with us. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to play some Christmas music for y'all, so just sing along here. Woo! Yeah, Christmas! Near Casey to blow that whistle real loud. Let's do it. One, two, three. Blow the whistle.
couldn't afford it when they got married. So Daddy decided that this was the year that my mother should have a wedding ring. And so he told all of us that we could be in on this gift and what little dab of money he would have spent on us, we let Daddy take it to put on Mommy's ring. And Daddy gave us all part of it by hiding the ring. And the one that found it was going to be a special treat. I think it was a box of chocolate candy. Anyway, Daddy gets the ring. We all looked. Mama had no idea what was going on. One of us found the ring. My brother and I fight over who it was. Anyhow, we got the ring. Mama loved it. We were all so very, very happy. And it was then that I realized that the best Christmas gift is not the one that you receive, but the one you give away. So I want to challenge every person out there to give to those who need it. And remember, a gift's not always something you buy. The greatest gift was given to us all. It didn't cost a thing. It was love. And I know you got plenty of that spirit. So I'll start by sharing mine with you. Hey, I love you. Merry Christmas. Well, thank you for that wonderful story, Miss Dolly. Oh, 
behalf of myself and my fellow assistant conductor on car three, his name is Russ, and I've also got our lead conductor right here by me, her name is Megan. I want to thank you all for riding with us today on the Dollywood Express Christmas Train. Have a wonderful and blessed day, y'all. Once again, folks, we would like to remind you to please remain seated until the train has come to a complete stop. We will let you know when it is safe to exit. Thank you, and enjoy yourself here at Dollywood. Well, it's come that time again. We're about to arrive back into the depot and complete our little journey. This would be a great time to start looking around and collecting up your personal belongings. Anything you brought on board with you, please take it with you when you go. We've also got some trash barrels at the end of the boardwalk, so if you accumulate any garbage along the way, you can just drop that stuff off in those barrels there. As we roll on around the bend, if you look up to the front of the car at the top, you'll see a number. Each car has a number up there. Just look up there and see what car number you are riding on. It only took us three months this time. <laughs> and I hear the tones singing over here at the Village Theater, so enjoy those as you exit out. But right now, I need to ask everybody on the train to please remain seated for me. Remain seated. I will let you know whenever it is safe for you to exit. Even after the train comes to a stop, remain seated. Cars one through six, if you'll raise your right hands high up in the air, point those right hands off to the right hand side, follow your fingers off onto the boardwalk. To the
Yep. That's what we come here for. The bread. Skip everything. Skip the bread. <laughs> Yeah, Lena says you can skip everything at Dollywood and just get this and leave and you'll be fine. I tend to agree with her. <laughs> All right, so it's so Elena's turn. This is the cinnamon bread, the best thing in the park. Literally, like, there's nothing better in the park that I think that is better than this. Yeah, she thinks that it's totally worth coming to the park just to get this loaf of bread right here. And I probably tend to agree with her. So we're going to try to um, eat this as delicately as possible and not take a bath in it because it's very messy. So you, you have the choice of icing, which is Elena's favorite, or my favorite is the apple butter to dip it in um, and yeah you just kind of have to go with your fingers there you can get some napkins and just kind of go at it so Elena's going to get a piece now these are fresh made oh. fresh made this is what it looks like and then this is what it looks like with it I'll get in the frame here Best thing ever. You don't have to hold it up there to talk. <laughs> well, I am because of how good it is. No, you got another piece. Okay. It's so good. You have a napkin. I just yeah. gave you a napkin. Oh my gosh, you guys. So when you pull it out. It kind of reminds you of like sticky bread, sticky bread or sticky buns. Um, but I had them take all of the calories and sugar out for me since I'm on a weight loss journey. So yeah, this has no calories at all. All right, for science. Oh gosh. <laughs> Best oh. thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Like, like when, like when you start to eat it, you cannot stop. No, you have to stop. But, 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 like, but like you have to make yourself. You're, you can't stop. If you ever, because you're not hungry. If you've ever made like cinnamon toast at home, where you take some bread, put some butter on it, cinnamon and sugar, and then toast it in the oven. This is that same concept, elevated by 10,000 million gazillion times, okay? I'm serious. We're going to give Daddy a bite. Daddy, he's going to dunk it in the apple butter. I'm not even going to put him on camera because he's going to spontaneously combust in his chair. I mean, this is unlike anything that you can get anywhere else. I'm telling you guys, this is a must-do. If you uh, have a diamond pass starting in opening of 2024, so in March, you can get one loaf of these per month for, for free or included with your pass. If you do not have um, a diamond pass, it's $10.99 for a loaf of bread and one dipping sauce. You can do either the icing or the apple butter. We get both, so it's an extra $1.50. Um, it, it's not bad at all and I had a pass holder discount today so I was able to get about 20 per, 20% off well worth it guys come to Dollywood right as you enter Craftsman's Valley it's the grist mill get your cinnamon bread you will not be disappointed all right just a little bit more kiddo okay here comes Cinderella. Here comes the train. Cinderella! <laughs> Sitting in here getting ready for the Wings of America show at the Dollywood Wings of America Theater, 
Um, this is a show that showcases different birds. Um, most of them are being rehabbed here at Dollywood um, by the trainers. Uh, if you didn't know, Dollywood has the largest amount of non-releasable bald eagles um, in the world. Um, they are a sanctuary for the American bald eagles and they are taken care of by the American Eagle Foundation here at Dollywood. Kind of a neat little thing. So we're going to get ready to see what these birds have uh, to offer us here. I know it's an educational show, an entertaining show. And yeah, we'll see what they got going on. Guess what bird is making that call? 
Eagle, any other guesses? Eagle, all? All right, I'd like to welcome up to the stage the voice of Hollywood's Raptors, the Red-Tailed Hawk. So I'd like to welcome out Miss Jessie here today. Some of you guys might be looking at me a little bit confused. You're like, what in the world? I thought that was an evil call. Well, I hate to bring it to you guys, but Hollywood has lied to you. Big shocker, right? No. <laughs> so, anytime you hear that sound in a big time movie or TV show, what you're actually hearing is a voiceover by none other than a red tail hawk. So, bald eagles don't sound as fierce and menacing as what you probably think that they sound like. If you want to hear what one sounds like, go head over to Eagle Mountain Sanctuary for about five or ten minutes, and you'll hear them chirping back and forth the word of Now, the red tail hawk actually gets their iconic name because of that beautiful rusty red tail. But these birds don't actually get that gorgeous red tail until they're about one and a half to two years of age. Until then, the tail's worn with brown color with stripes, similar to Jesse's wings. Now, if any of our birds here at Wings of America deserve the term Hawkeyes, it is most definitely just because a hawk's vision is incredibly powerful. In fact, it's about five times as powerful as that of us humans. So we like to say here at Wings of America, if Jessie could read, she could actually read the headlines of a newspaper from over half a mile to a mile away. It's pretty incredible, right? But now, what do you see here? That's okay. We'll do this. <laughs> so, now, the Lorenzo hawk is one of the most widespread raptor species that we have here in our country. However, they're not just found in the U.S., they're actually found all across the continent of North America. Thank you so much. That was right in my ear. These birds can be found as far north as Canada and as far south as Mexico and the Caribbean. They love to spend their time in the mountains of the Rockies, the farmlands of the Midwest, and even right here in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Now, out in the wild, these birds have been known to eat a wide variety of different organisms. They'll eat small mammals, other birds, even reptiles like venomous snakes. However, these birds are what we typically consider rodent specialists. So that means they primarily like to eat things like rats and mice. Now, while we're talking about rats and mice, did you guys know that in one single year, one mother rat can give birth to over 200 babies. A lot of rats, right? And because of this high reproduction rate, we can begin to understand why rats and mice play such a pest species role for us humans. However, good news for us, we've got birds like Jessie here who would love to eat one or two of those rats every single day of her life if she could. And if we could envision a world without hawks, falcons, or even owls, we would be completely overrun by these pest species. Now, with a quick show of hands, who all here has been driving down the road? You've looked up at a light pole or a tree and you've seen a hawk perch up there. No, I definitely have. Well, this is because hawks are what we consider opportunistic predators. So that means they like to perch really high, wait for their prey to come to them before swooping down and trying to catch them. Now, you may be asking, this, you may be asking yourself why we tend to see hawks in the size of birds. That's a great question. And it's actually because hawks uh, or what, I just threw myself off, guys. What am I saying here? Yeah. So, we tend to see hawks in the sides of roads because of litter, right? So humans tend to litter quite a bit. And this is, uh, I've done this before, you guys may have done it too. Have you ever been eating an apple or a banana? When you're done with the apple core or banana peel, you toss it out the window because it's biodegradable, right? Well, while it's true that these items are biodegradable, what we've recently learned through research is that when we toss these items out the window, they'll attract pest species like rodents to the sides of roads. Pop quiz, who remembers what Jesse's favorite food item is? Rats, right? Rodents. So over time, red tail hawks have learned that they can find a pretty easy meal along the side of the road. However, keep in mind, whenever these birds are babies, their parents don't teach them to look both ways before crossing the road. So oftentimes, when they swoop down to catch their prey, They'll cross traffic and they'll get hit by vehicles. In fact, this is one of the leading causes of red tail hawk injuries and deaths in wildlife rehab facilities in our country today. So I'm sure that all of you guys right now are on the edges of your seats thinking, well, John, what can I do to help protect birds like Jesse here? And it's simple. 
Just don't litter, right? Keep all of your garbage in your car, including your biodegradable garbage, until you get to your destination and you can dispose of it properly in a garbage can. I know our birds like Jessie here would be very grateful for that. And I think if she could talk, she would say thank you as well, even though she slapped me in the face with her wings a couple times. But now, Jessie here is one of our older members here at the Wings of America Bird Show. She is turning a whopping 26 years old this year. She is one of my favorite feathered friends, but I also think she's one of our most talented wildlife uh -huh. uh, educators. Everybody give it up for Miss Jessie today! Yay.
guys. It looks like we're going to have to take a little bit of a break. Give us just a few minutes and give you all some updates. Sit tight for just a minute. Well, in an unexpected chain of events, the remainder of the bird show had to be uh, abruptly canceled because apparently they had a medical emergency with one of their birds, which the people that put on the bird show are the caretakers for the birds. So unfortunately, we had just had to stop that. Completely understand. Nothing that they could do. Definitely. Um, send well wishes to the little little bird that's in trouble. But we are going to move on with our day. So the ride was pretty good, and so anyways, the ride was pretty good, and it was probably, it's like my favorite ride now. I was so scared to ride it before, but now it's like my favorite ride, and um, the reason is because it's just smooth, and there's only like uh, two full loops and two corkscrews, and it's so much fun. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's my little review. Twilight at Dollywood. Cold outside. It is not cold outside, but we have the lights. Let's go around. I love how this is kind of giving me a glow, like an aura. Is that a sign? <laughs>
So I'm in Wildwood Grove right now. Um, Elena and Charles have went to ride Big Bear. I'm going to try to stake out a spot for the drone show. Now I have about two hours until that happens, but it's very important that I see this because it is the thing to see apparently. Um, so this is where I'm going to be. This is where my camp is going to be. This is where I'm hoping it is. I've looked on the map. I've asked people. It should be in the sky right above my head. So I'm hoping that that's a go. But I thought we'd have time for a little Wildwood Grove, Dollywood Christmas time spin. See all the beautiful lights. And I'm, oh, I'm in front of that tree and it's lighting me up. Do a little spinny roo. There's the tree. Of, yeah, butterflies. Back around to my tree. stumbled upon that sitting up here in Wildwood Grove and a light show came upon the tree and that was really neat Dolly narrated it and sang a little song it was really cute it's only about maybe five minutes long um, not very long at all but it was a pleasant surprise that I'm sitting here just filming and walking around and Dolly starts talking to me I'm like hello what's going on so we're still sitting here waiting for the light drone show but the tree, that was awesome.
now, y'all. <laughs> we just watched the um, drone show. I can't put into words. Like, it's amazing, y'all. It's short. It's only probably eight minutes long. But the fact that they can do all of that with drones, oh, my gosh. I, I hope you had the same reaction when you were watching it. Um, yeah, the fireworks at the end was a good touch. Yeah, I, I will be coming back just to see this show. It was fantastic. An excellent, excellent kiss goodnight. It's wonderful. It's very wonderful. Yeah, got me in the feels, just like Disney fireworks do, but this, this was totally different. And yeah, I can't say enough good things. Did you like it? Yes. Yes. Hey guys, in front of the Wildwood tree here in Wildwood Grove at Dollywood for Smoky Mountain Christmas, wrapping up this fantastic day. It's been excellent. We've ridden rides. We've eaten great food. We've had spectacular entertainment. We're so glad you came along. We'll have more this season from Dollywood Smoky Mountain Christmas. If there's anything you would like to see or like us to showcase, please leave us a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Make sure you follow Oceaneers Travel at all of our social media locations and podcasts wherever you may choose to listen. Until next time, friends, from a wonderful day here at Dollywood during Smoky Mountain Christmas, from me to you, we love y'all. We're so glad you're on this journey with us. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.